Okay. All right. So what I ended up doing was making a little snail. So he's actually not decorated at all. He has, um, I don't know if you guys drink Izzy sodas. They're these really yummy sodas that I love to drink and my husband loves to drink. And they have these cute little emblems on them, so I didn't feel like covering it up at all. Um, <laughs> so, so that is the very first one. Now, he's kind of a friend to the, a marker that I made for some basil. So this is another guy. And he just has a little basil marker inside of him. So they're kind of like little friends. And he's just on a popsicle stick. Very, very easy to do. Yay! <laughs> so, so this is um, obviously pretty easy to do. But as I do my crafts, there's lots of different really, um, really small techniques that people can pick up on, improve on, and um, do other crafts with. So I really enjoy that. Here's one of the guys that's out of beer bottle caps. So you can make tons of these little guys. I love them. And um, they don't have to be for marking your plants, but look how easy that is. All right. Um, <laughs> yes, growing beer. I wish I could grow. I wish it was that easy. <laughs> if, I was, if I could grow beer, I think I'd have a lot of money. So we will be making those, uh, like I said, they're, they're pretty darn quick to make. And let's, um, let's get started. Now, um, welcome any of the newer people or any of the people that came in after we had uh, started. We're going to get started on some of my obsession with uh, garden markers. And the first guy is going to be our snail. So let's, uh, let's move on to Craft Cam 2010. Sorry if that snapped right in your ears. All right, technical director is leading us off. Now, some of you might actually be following me because I do try and list all of the materials before the show. And usually my materials involve things that you have already laying around the house, if not in your craft rooms. So this, this one's pretty easy. Um, like I said earlier, you need some bottle caps. I have two here for the um, for this guy. See, he, he actually was stuck in with some wire here. For this guy, you just need two bottle caps, of course, because he kind of needs to be finished off on that side. But for your marker, which we'll do tonight, we'll do a marker, uh, all you need is one cap because the other side's not going to be anything uh, finished off. Pretty darn easy to do. Uh, another thing that was helpful for me was a whole, or a big round punch. Now, I'm just going to give you a little caveat here. I heard, this is all heard, I heard that if you punch tin with your um, punches, that it actually will sharpen your punches. I don't know. I'm willing to take the risk on that, but um, it, it could be, you know, very well the opposite, that it actually is dulling your punches. But I, I'm willing to take the risk on that because I have lots of coupons, <laughs> so I could go out and buy, buy other ones. But I really like, I really like being able to... Uh, Put my punch in, see that there, pull that out, and then this fits perfectly inside of one of my little bottle caps. So that's, that's I'm just giving you a little forewarning. I, I've read, I haven't officially talked to, let's say, the Fiskars people, but I have read that. So if anybody in here knows um, if that's, true or false or you know if you are part of those companies that says my product can do that but other products can't please speak up send us links uh, so that we are more educated on what we can do with our punches in 10. Now let's let's get started on how you disassemble one of your cans. Pretty darn easy to do. First what you want to do is make sure that your can uh, is free of all of the sticky like I said this is 40 44 uh, grams of sugar, which is insane. Either take a sharp pair of what I, I like to use is these KitchenAid scissors. These are uh, for your kitchen, and they are really good for cutting through just this thinner tin. You can also get a hole started with um, a, a kitchen knife, and I just like to cut through all the way around, right around the crown. 
don't worry about it being a perfect cut. And also, mind you, let me actually stop and say this. You should be wearing gloves. Do not follow what I am doing right now, as in not wearing gloves. You should be wearing gloves. It's very dangerous to work with tin without gloves. Um, I like to live on the edge, and I know that you guys um, are, are um, just waiting on pins and needles to see if I'm going to burn myself with a hot glue gun, or if I'm going to now today um, hurt myself on some tin cans. So I, I um, don't save the tops normally. You can recycle the tops. I do usually save the bottoms for other crafts. They can actually hold some neat things like beads and stuff. And then really just cut yourself a slit down the middle. Pretty, pretty easy to do all the way to the bottom and then start your cut along the bottom. Now you're going to get yourself kind of an ornery curled up piece of tin so be careful when you get towards the end of your last cut because it's going to, it could snap back at you. So I like to keep these because like I said they can hold little things like beads and stuff like that. I like to keep those or you know maybe some, some paint or whatnot. All right, now uh, before I, you know, I really dive into cutting out any of the designs or anything, I just like to give it a, a better edge because I just don't like those, these really rough edges that I had started out with. So I just like to cut those. Now, find yourself, you don't want to be cutting out any sort of patterns with this curly type of tin. So, um... What you need to do is find yourself a semi-rounded edge. I think a, a tile counter is the best. And um, you probably can see here, you don't need to press down hard, but just to straighten it out, just give it a little bit of a, of a rub on the, on the corner, sorry, this, the uh, side of a table or a counter. You can see that that's getting a little bit straighter. And like I said, do not pull or tug too hard on it or else it will just go the opposite direction. So we have some pretty straight tin here. Um, all right, so now, uh, this looks like it's still a little wet. Let me, like I was saying earlier, just make sure the sticky is out of it. So I like to swish around some water before I empty it out. And then, of course, when you're cutting, um, you're probably going to get a little splash of water with you. And, of course, that's, water is better than getting, you know, sugar all over the place. So that's why I like to make that little recommendation. Now just flatten out that. What I'm going to do is actually just use one of my pre-flattened out pieces to draw on my snail. The best way to draw on your snail is actually to take your bottle cap, put it on the piece of tin, I guess you can call it tin, um, and get yourself a sharpie. But before you start drawing anything out, do not do it on the silver side. So you want to flip it over to your um, to your pattern side, so the soda side, and then this is where you want to draw your pattern. But I'm going to do it on the silver side just so that you can see how it looks. All right. And um, the only reason I'm, I like it so that when you do it on the other side is so that you're not getting the, the pin marker. So I'm getting a sharpie right here, a green sharpie, and I like to put I like to have his body be about half of the um, the bottle cap. So just start his neck kind of halfway and then just give him a little tiny head. And I also like to bring his belly down below the um, the bottle cap itself. And you can see he's, he's it's kind of like a rocking horse. And then just like that. So you can probably, let's see if we can see a little bit there. There we go. So you can see there that um, I just drew it. So it look, so I already have an idea of where my shell essentially is going to go, and I'm just going to draw a straight line across. So he kind of looks like a funky little rocking horse a little bit there. You can see him. So um, this is my first time working with any sort of metal, and I'm really excited to uh, be working with it. I'm going to tell you, though, it, it was not the easiest. Um, thing for me to work with. It, it's proved to be ornery. So uh, I've heard that, and I've seen demos on like Sizzix machines or, you know, I guess Cuddlebug, that kind of stuff where you can put the tin can through it and it does really cute um, designs and stuff. And I would love, 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 love to be able to do that. But I don't have one of those machines. 
So um, I can't demo that, but I would love to be able to. And um, I've seen some really cute designs coming out of that. And I'm, I thought, man, if I had one of those machines, all I would do is do a cute pattern, and then I would just draw the, or um, put in permanent marker the uh, name of the, the herb or whatever, and then throw that on a stick. It's super cute. Okay, so now I kind of have this funky little rocking horse shape. I want to give him an eyeball. There's a couple options that you can do here. Uh, you can just take your, take like a little razor and uh, you can poke an eye hole in there, but I actually already have a pin hole punch right here, and so I'm going to just give him a little eye. You can also use a nail, like a smaller nail, and poke that through. You can see he's got a little eyeball now, and that that makes it just a little bit easier to have this little pinhole punch. This guy's come in so easily. This is, I, f I think this is a Fisker's punch. 